Hi, everyone. That, let me thank you for coming tonight. These programs are provided by the Friends of the Library who make them possible, and we're so happy and grateful for that. Let me tell you a little bit about Betsy. Betsy Wentz be began learning design at the young age alongside her mother, who had an interior design shop above the family carriage house. Betsy later, later earned a master degree and for many years worked in mental health counseling. In 2011, she blended her experience and education, establishing her own design firm, and in 2016 added Studio B, Design Showroom. Betsy's work has been featured in Traditional Home, Veranda, El Decor, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Home, and House Beautiful, among others. Betsy lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and now has clients in Pittsburgh, California, Chicago, New York, Florida, Maine, Ohio, and Alabama. So let me welcome you and please get, keep the questions coming and we have a really lovely presentation. Hi, Betsy, thanks for coming. Hi, thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm so excited to speak with you guys about my book, Design Happy. Um, I am going to start by, well, first of all, this book is a design story of 12 of my favorite, more recent projects. So we have a great presentation here, um, kind of highlighting each project and um, each one is broken down into a color palette. So the way we did this is obviously they're whole house projects, but there's sort of a, you know, a color thread that runs through each project. So you'll see at the beginning of each chapter and we have it highlighted here in the project um, that we broke it down into color palette. And there are some Benjamin Moore paint colors listed also, just in case anybody's interested in um, doing it for themselves or getting some ideas for their own house. So we're gonna start here um, with the first project, which is my Arlington project. And I think, you know, one of the things I like most about what I get to do is that, you know, it's the relationship with the client. So with each new project, of course, there's a client and there's a story and um, there's a relationship. And so I've become such great friends. It's one of the really wonderful things about what we do. I've become really good friends with a lot of my clients. So this first project makes me smile um, because there's, they've become such great friends. So this is a family of eight um, that I got to know very early on in my career. Actually, they originally hired us to do a home. It was my mom and I back when we worked together um, in our little town in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And um, the, the husband moved around a lot for work. So um, we ended up sort of working on all of their houses. I think there were four or five in total. So this project here in Arlington is their most recent one and or one of the two most recent ones. And it's in, in Columbus, Ohio. And um, we're gonna start with the with the family room, which is more often than not sort of the heart of the home. Um, so I kind of highlighted a few things about, about this. Whenever we're designing a family room, particularly for families, large families or any family really, uh, traffic flow is a huge concern and certainly something that we want to consider while still making it beautiful. So here, this is a sunken family room. You can't really tell from the picture, but we needed to be able to see 10, 12, sometimes 14 people in this room. So we often will use a sectional as we did here, uh, floating it in an L shape. And we needed to float all the furniture in the room because, and, and you'll see in some future slides that uh, the main entrance to the house, which is the back entrance, the mud room is right, right off of this room. So a lot of times folks are concerned about floating furniture and will it be awkward walking into the back of a sofa. But as you can see here, uh, it's all sort of nestled into the center. The TV is on the right-hand side. Um, and the, the, the traffic flow is great. You can see a ton of people in this room. The ceiling was a little bit low. It's an older house. So we decided to use a color on the ceiling. It's a, it's a light blue, really pretty shade of blue, just add a little bit of interest and the semi-flush mount light. We, we really like to use lighting in family rooms because it really creates softness. 
but you don't want to block the view of the TV. So usually we'll use a flush mount there. Um, we also commissioned a local artist to do the artwork in the back, which plays off of the colors in the drapery. And this room is just full of life. I love it. My client, who's also now my friend, um, would often say that she, you know, he moved around a lot, but usually in sort of like northern locations. And she said it's so gloomy. So she always wanted bright colors and things to make her happy. So this room is really, um, I think, turned out beautifully and works really well for their family. So moving on um, to the next slide is the mudroom I was speaking about. And although it is the, the back of the house, it's where the family most often would enter. And here um, we wanted it to be, it's really a first impression and she wanted it to be really inviting and fun. And so we decided to use a textured vinyl paper in the mudroom. And again, it's something that I think clients are often hesitant to do in a mudroom where there's dirt. They also have a bunch of dogs. Um, they were concerned about things like that, but the, the vinyl wallpaper is actually extremely durable. It's commercial grade. And it really, I think, adds something that paint cannot. So here we use that. And then also the colorful vintage rugs, which you'll see is really a common thread in my design work. I love colorful rugs. I use them in every project. And I think they add something, they're old already, so you can't really hurt them. They're all vegetable dyed. Um, they last and really put up with a lot of um, wear and tear. So that's a favorite thing. And then you can see also we added a fun light and used a custom Benjamin Moore color on that just to kind of finish off the space. Um, and then to the right, you'll see um, it was from the, the, the family room that we talked about first. Sometimes I think it's fun to add a wallpaper in a bookcase to add just a little bit of a layer there um, for all of your decorative books and, and things that you have frames. And then of course the um, exaggerated hardware. I love that that's a pomegranate pull and it's just so much fun, you know, versus your regular little handle. So just little, little things like that, I think make a big difference when you're designing a family space. Um, and then this is the formal living room in the house. And although the family doesn't use this room very often, uh, my friend does, and she loves to come in here and have coffee in the morning and talk on the phone. And so um, this was a, a place of particular interest for her. They also host a lot. Uh, they entertain a lot. So this is a space where they do that. So it had this beautiful fireplace, but it didn't leave a whole lot of room for artwork. So we decided to, and you'll see in some, as we get further into the program, a lot of times it just, you have so much artwork in the room already, and we're looking for something just a little bit different. So here we sourced some vintage plates, which I think are so much fun. We had so much fun hanging these and figuring out where um, we didn't measure a thing. We just sort of started with one and kind of moved our way around the ceiling. I mean, around the um, the wall there. But I think sometimes it's more interesting to to select an object like that versus artwork um, and place it. So anyway, that ended up being a really great um, spot. And then we did use, it's hard to tell in the photograph, but we used a really fabulous wallpaper in this room too. It has a texture and just a little bit of metallic in it. So made it really special and it's one of her favorite spots. So that's Arlington. So next up is uh, Blackboard Farm. And this is a really unique place. This is a client of mine that it was a client who came back to me and she and her husband have been looking for a lot of land. They really wanted to have a farm and they're both professionals, but they love to farm. And she is in particular is a flower farmer and they were looking for a property that they could build their forever home, a really large um, farmhouse and the property became available. So they went ahead and bought it. And, um, and this is the story here. It's for the most part, the couple prefers more neutral colors, which is 
which is great, but turquoise, Robin's egg blue is her favorite color. And you'll see, it's one of my favorite things about this project. It's just sort of a thread that was weaved throughout the project. So you'll notice as we go through some of the pictures, um, and if you check out the book, there are even more pictures of her home and that color that sort of just found its way into most of the spaces. So we're gonna start with the, the front porch, which is hands down my one of my, <laughs> probably my favorite outdoor space. Um, it was really something that she had envisioned and wanted, and they spend so much time on this front porch. Um, the stone, and the ceiling, you can see we also painted the ceiling here, that same sort of signature pale blue, which just adds just something. You know, it's maybe you don't even notice it until you're sitting in the space. It warms it up. But um, there's so many different types of furniture on this porch. It wraps around the house and they entertain. And you can see we we put some vintage rugs out and they're, they're all mismatched and um, they weren't measured for. We just, we picked out a few that we really liked and just throw them down. And it just really creates such a inviting atmosphere. Um, and then sort of peeking out between those pillars, you can see to the, the photo to the right is the front door and it has the signature turquoise color on the Dutch door. And um, it's often left open in the, in the nice weather, so. Um, just a great outdoor space. And then this is a photo of the kitchen and they had a really, so they both love to cook. So this was a very much a primary space that needed to function. Um, the husband also makes his own beer um, and can filter it up from the basement onto a tap. So they wanted this special bar off to the left. And they used a Danby marble on all of the countertops. It's a beautiful kind of extra thick slab. You can see their uh, water falling down. And of course the signature turquoise um, backsplash, which we just absolutely wanted to use. And the other really notable thing, um, and again, this is one of the things that I love about working with, with people is that they bring you know, the things that they love to me and we make them work. So this pot rack was completely their idea. They loved it. They designed it. And it's really, really cool. It adds so much to the space. It's a big steel pot rack and they use it. I mean, all the time they cook in this kitchen every night and it has big fat leather straps um, that kind of hold it up. So anyway, that's another really, really cool feature about this kitchen. Um, that kind of makes it. And then here are some of the, the more private spaces of the home. The photo on the left is the master bedroom. And we had so many textures and features in this room. They had a reclaimed um, wood wall in the bedroom and it was very masculine and she wanted to, to soften it and add a feminine touch. So we chose this wallpaper that has a very much a watercolor sort of feeling to it. It's an English artist um, that turned some of her work into wallpaper. And I just thought it was so perfect for this space. It has that, that same thread of turquoise in it. It's just very casual. And we used a big shag rug and uh, upholstered bed there. It's just such a cozy spot. And then just off of the bedroom is this outdoor space that it's their outdoor master space and um, great teak furniture really just makes, makes it such a great way to kind of live indoor and outdoor. Again, we're in Pennsylvania, so we don't have the best of weather, but I do commend them. They really put a lot into their outdoor spaces and we use them a lot. You know, I, one of the benefits is we get to be friends, I get to go and they entertain and it's so much fun to, to use these spaces. So anyway, that's Blackwood Farm. So the next project is my house, which um, is always a blessing and a curse to design your own house. So in some ways it's my 
favorite project and in some ways it's my biggest challenge because you know you're trying to to do it for yourself and I think that's really difficult I think any designer would tell you that um so we can move to the first slide so this is so I'm in Pittsburgh and there isn't a ton of modern architecture although we do have we do have spots of it so this house was a renovation and it was a 1970s house and we sort of blew out this portion of the house to make it with very high ceilings and a lot of glass and um i i started with that backsplash which i still to this day i mean it's been 10 years so we were designing this house when i was pregnant with my fourth child uh who's now 10 and i just wanted the house to function for a young family, but I also wanted it to last and to be classic. So for me, um, I was conflicted about selecting that backsplash because so many people worry about tiring of things, but that is one of my pieces of advice is that if you really love something, you should go with it because if you love it, you're less likely to tire of it. So um, when I do sort of remodel my kitchen. I do not think I will change that backsplash. I think I will probably always have it there. It's just one of my favorite things. Um, the next two shots are the, uh, well, the one on the left then is the family room right off the kitchen. And this is where we spend all of our time. I fell in love with this light uh, that we decided to lacquer that orange red, which is my favorite color. Um, and some great artwork, a really comfortable printed chair. Uh, with a young family, I like to use prints and things. It hides a multitude of sins. And um, I think it just adds some excitement to the space. We hung a surfboard um, because I just thought it was so cool and I loved it. Uh, we don't surf, but I really liked it. So that's one of my things about artwork. You know, you can pretty much hang anything on the wall if you love it and it can work work with your with your real artwork so as you look past there too that's actually my husband's study and you can notice if you look closely that there are two different types of window treatments in that space and that's one of my tips you know if you have challenges with different types of windows and you can't do drapery panels versus Roman shades. Um, we'll often mix the two styles in the same room as long as I, I typically like to, to leave the pattern the same, but you, know, you can change up the style of the drapery treatment in the space as long as you use the same fabric. And you can see that over there on the picture to the right, that's the same room. Um, we have a lot of white walls in my house, ironically, and I just really wanted that room to pop. And we had some old brick there and I managed to convince my husband to let me um, paint it a shade of purple, <laughs> which um, I didn't think that he would let me do that, but um, we all love it. It's just really cool. It has a touch of gray in it, so it's not so feminine, but anyway, um, it can always be painted back. So, you know, go for it, see how you like it. I also have some of my kids' artwork hanging there, and I invested in some some nicer frames. And you know, I love it every bit as much as as the other artwork in my house. So you know, anything can really be artwork. So, um, next, oh yeah, that's the same room. So that's kind of the other angle, and that shows the Roman shade valances and the the brick wall over there on the right. Uh, the other thing about this room is the rug. So I had a different rug in this space originally, and I, I really liked it a lot. And I was in New York City a couple weeks after I installed it, and I found this rug at ABC Home. And it's a vintage rug. And I just, I absolutely fell in love with it. And I wrapped it up and I shipped it home and <laughs> kind of rolled up the other one. Um, but this kind of goes to show it doesn't need to match necessarily, but the rug can add so much pop to a room. And it's one of my favorite things to do is to dress up the floor with something. I think it goes a long way. 
So the last slide for my house, I chose this room to talk about because we did use a bold paper in here. And while it is my formal living room, we don't spend a ton of time in this room. I mean, we, we look at it a lot. We don't necessarily spend a lot of time in it. So it was the perfect place to use a busier pattern because, you know, as we go up the steps every night and as we walk in through the house, you can sort of see the space, but you're not in it. So I love the dark ground and sort of the interest that it provides um, as a room that we're often looking at, but not in. So um, hung some fun artwork on it. And anyway, it's one of my favorite spots. So the next project is Bunker Hill. And this house is a very old historical home on a golf course. So um, the challenges involved in this project were twofold. Number one, the client is a really good friend of mine. So um, she and I, we've been friends forever. And, you know, there's that element that's sort of in there when you start to work with someone. And the other challenge um, was just that she really wanted more neutral palette and she had a ton of antiques, which is always a good thing. It's really fun to be able to, to work those things in and you can't create that if the client doesn't have it, then you can't, you know, just make it appear. So, but at the same time, we had to make a lot of different things work in this house that came from her father and from other people um, in her family that were really important to her. And so the end product is absolutely gorgeous, but it was definitely a process getting there. So we can start out in the, in the living room. And this is a great example. So she really wanted to keep the walls creamy white. So we used a Benjamin Moore white dove in this space. And there are a lot of antiques and older pieces in this space, the piano, um, the Chesterfield sofa off to the right, which you can't see that well. There were several um, large old antique chests in the space. So we wanted to keep it light and bright, but also incorporate these pieces. So um, the thing that we decided, so we, we decided to kind of lighten it up and make it fun with this ottoman, uh, which had the pattern, had the color sort of really adds that pop, the yellow pillows. But if you really think about it, everything else in the room is very, very soft and mellow. So it was a really nice combination of me sort of pushing, saying, you know, we need something to uh, add interest to the space and her saying, I really want to keep it very simple. And I was so happy with the way that it turned out. Even those sconces on either side of the fireplace are, they're new, but they they kind of look old. They are, they're really beautiful, um, sophisticated pieces. So we, we handpicked everything in this space and I'm just really happy with the way that turned out. And then we have the den and love this space. Again, just so awesome. All of the walls in the space were the dark, knotty pine and for about a year, we toyed around with painting the walls and there was a, a, a lot of discussion around whether that was the right thing to do. We had the, um, they have large uh, golden retriever dogs. And so the leather sectional was an absolute necessity. The rug was existing from a prior project. And so we were kind of working with that. So we decided to go ahead, lacquer the walls, this really fantastic shade of blue. And the fun ottoman once again. Um, I do this a lot. I think it's a great way to add pattern and color and functionality to an otherwise sort of simple space. And it's a simple thing. You can take it away. You can, you can change it. You can recover it. So um, it's also really soft on the feet for a place where you're going to be relaxing. So one of my favorite places. I love that room. And here we have the master bedroom and bathroom and the master bedroom was actually a, a, it was a renovation slash new construction for the house. So we ended up with this vaulted ceiling 
And again, she really wanted to keep things simple. So we went with the textured paper on the bed wall, but it is, it's quiet, but it does create a little bit of texture and softness. And we have the, the gold discs, which draw the eye up and sort of give you a little bit of something to look at without it being artwork. And um, again, just that really cozy rug. And we've got an antique chair off to the right um, and, a, and an old, old nightstand. So this is another example of a new bed, new drapery, but we're mixing it in with the old. And I just think it's so inviting. And then their master bathroom was a complete renovation to that bathroom. And we decided to use a textured vinyl paper in this space. And I think a lot of times people are concerned and hesitant to use wallpaper in bathrooms. So this is a great example of how you can, I mean, it is, it is very functional. It's vinyl. So it's going to withstand water and scrubbing and moisture and all of that stuff. So it's actually the perfect spot for a wallpaper. And this particular one, I think just adds so much with those purples and I just love it so much. And it works really well with the really traditional floor and cabinetry. Okay. So the next project is dogwood. And this one is in our town in Pittsburgh. And um, they bought a really small 1970s ranch house. And they bought this particular property. It's up a, a bit of a hill. It's up on a, it's a long kind of a drive. Um, and it overlooks the, the town and the river. And they really wanted that view. But the house was really itty bitty small. And so they brought me in pretty early on, which was great because I was able to help make decisions as far as, you know, flow and floor plan and how we're going to maximize that view. So this is the dining room and the view that I spoke about, you can't quite see it, but that's the window, one of the windows that you, that you can see it's sort of up overlooking. Uh, the town and this space was great we ended up with this vaulted ceiling and we once again we used a textured paper but the thing about this space is you know the lighting I really love the fact that they went big with the lighting it's it really makes such a huge difference in the space having that ceiling height and being able to drop that fabulous fixture down um, I think makes a huge difference and we highlighted the sconce off to the right you can see it's painted a custom Benjamin Moore color the the citron yellow and it just it just adds such a fun custom touch to the space and the live edge table and we went with a with a larger dining chair they really wanted big comfortable chairs that they could they could lounge in for a long time when they had family dinners so I just was so pleased with the way this room turned out And so here on the left, we have the entry. Um, and again, it's a small house. Even after we renovated it, it's still a small house. So we need storage. So we use this really great cabinet in the front hall. And she keeps all sorts of things in there, just an extra spot to stash stuff. So, you know, use the storage where you can. Um, and you can see the really fun powder room popping out in the background. And again, that's sort of the place to have fun. Um, it's a place you, you visit and you don't spend a ton of time in and you walk past it all the time. So love to use a fun wallpaper. We used a, um, we lacquered some sconces in there too. You can see a cobalt blue. And I think it's just, it's just really fun. And off to the right, is the kitchen, which is attached to that original picture of the dining room. And some things to note here, the tile, you can see here that we took it all the way up and used it as the wall, not just as the backsplash. And 
that is such a great way to, especially in a smaller place like this, in a smaller space to make the space look larger instead of chopping it up and having um, a backsplash with something else over it. So when you can, I love the idea of using the tile everywhere. And likewise, the drapery, the Roman shades in this space just make it so cozy. Um, and the stools, you know, that was just such a fun pop of color and it really adds something to an otherwise very utilitarian space. Kitchens are often kind of sterile because, you know, they need to be. So I love the idea of adding the pattern and the color with the fabrics. And their master bedroom, which I just love so much. Um, it's such a great example of how you can use this soft blush color with the really deep, deep, deep chocolate brown. So it's the masculine and the feminine put together. Um, I think this room is awesome. I love the way it turned out. And the discs above the bed, again, that's just, I find myself doing that sort of thing instead of artwork. Because if you think about how the bed needed to be off center there, it's so much less noticeable because you have these sort of abstract um, discs and objects above the bed floating. And so, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It can just sort of be and look really great. And the upholstered bed, I always love an upholstered bed. If you can um, do that, I think it really makes a difference. Not only is it more comfortable, but I just think it adds an extra layer of sort of luxury in a private space. So that's the master bedroom. Okay, so Winter Cove. This is such a beautiful place. This is a project we did in Maine and it's on the water and it's really unique. Um, it's just, it's, it's a, you'll have to go to the first slide so I can show, but it's just, it's such a gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful space. So on the left is the, what, what I lovingly call the mud room, although it certainly does not look like a mud room here. It's an, it's an entrance that, that the owners use and that most people use to enter the house, although it's not the front door. And, um, they designed this really fantastic spiral staircase, which leads to a guest suite. And as fabulous as this is, it definitely um, limited what you could do with the space. So we had to get strategic with wallpaper. We wanted, because the ceiling was so high, we really wanted to have something going on, but we didn't want it to detract from the sort of the showpiece, which is the staircase. So we chose this really gorgeous cloud paper. I think it's a Schumacher. Um, and it just, it really did, it really did the job. Dropped a great um, custom painted lantern from the ceiling again with that height and tucked a console and a mirror to kind of make the space look larger and also just not look so empty. So I love the way that that, that, that space turned out. And to the right is uh, an image of part of the guest suite, which is at the top of those steps. And I selected this picture just to um, kind of, again, showcase what wallpaper can do for a space. The entire bedroom is not wallpapered in this paper, just sort of the entryway where this little vanity is. And it's such a sweet, sweet little spot and it's so perfect for guests to be able to use um, as a vanity or a desk with the mirror and the sconces. It's just such a fun little spot. And so now we're in the main part of the house and the picture on the left is part of the dining room slash kitchen. This house was long and skinny and had a lot of sort of like very spaces that were open to one another. So this was a little banquette that we built a custom banquette for. Um, the client really wanted a spot where they could sit not at the dining table and not in the living room where they could sit and have tea 
or have a cocktail with a friend and um, not be so loungy. They wanted a spot where they could sit within that space. And so we built this custom banquette and these cute little tables I thought were just perfect. But to note again, um, for artwork, these, this is an orange peel installation, which they are literally orange peels and they are, um, dehydrated and then hand painted by an artist. And I first learned about this woman, she was in Atlanta and, um, she was doing all kinds of very cool things. And we worked on another project together, a show, a show house. And, um, we commissioned her to do this, this project for us. And it was just so much fun. And I think it was just the right thing for these trees. We wanted something that would stand out, but we didn't want to block all of the wallpaper with a large piece of artwork. So I think that, um, these orange peels really were absolutely perfect. And just beyond that space, you come to the photo on your right, which is the, the living room. And this is a, an entertaining space for the couple, uh, we dropped that fabulous light. We had multiple seating arrangements in this space. My favorite thing about this, this really the house is this fireplace and the bar attached. It was all built um, custom to their specs and this fabulous stone fireplace. They had this, this niche and really pictured something very special. We were able to find an artist in New York who did this silk tapestry and we selected all of the threads to, um, we really kind of wanted it to look like it was part of the fireplace, but also just have a little bit of the other shades of the colors in the room. And I think it's just stunning and it turned out so beautifully. So this is a great space. And then here are some just fun, notable things in the house. On the left is the master bedroom vanity. We worked with an architect in Maine. That's a bird's eye maple um, vanity. It's obviously two-sided and super functional and just really unique. And then on the right, there's a suspended staircase that leads to a little area at the top. It overlooks the family room with the silk um, artwork. And it's just a, it's almost like a yoga spot. It's like a little uh, loft, little baby sort of loft that you can um, go up and, and spend a little time up there. And I just love this staircase. I thought it was just so unique and really cool. So pulpit rock, this is a really, really, really old house with a really, really, really fun owner, new owner who wanted to make it pop and wanted to use a lot of color, um, a lot of color. So it was super exciting for me to be able to do that because oftentimes when someone has a house that's that old, they just really feel like they want to keep it pretty traditional. So this was really, really fun for me. Their home was not done when it was time to photograph for this book. So we had to make the decision if we were going to go for it or not. And they were, they were so great. They said, yep, let's finish it. Let's get it, um, get it done. And as it turns out, their dining room is the cover of, of the book. So I was so thrilled to be able to finish this project with them in time. This is the living room and um, it's so much fun. She had very specific ideas about um, colors she wanted to use and, and things like that. So we, you can notice that we have the different colored chairs in the dining room, which is just such an easy and fun way to express yourself without investing in anything permanent. You know, those chairs are all different colors and they can just as easily change but it's just, it's really, really fun. And we lacquered that cabinet um, blue. That's That was an existing, just, we just sort of selected that area and painted it out. And it, and it just turned out so beautifully. It pops with the modern artwork. Um, you'll also notice on the left, there's sort of a graffiti looking piece of artwork. And that is fabric that we, we ordered a couple yards of that fabric and stretched it onto 
some boards as artwork. And so, um, you know, anything can be artwork, orange peels, fabric, um, your kid's artwork, whatever you, a surfboard, whatever you think, whatever you like and whatever fits the space. So anyway, this was a great, a great spot. And this is the front hall. Um, and she really, really wanted a crazy neon pink rug. So we selected an over dye here. Um, this is such a fun rug. It really set the tone, but obviously I couldn't, um, I, I couldn't do anything crazy on the walls with that on the floor. So we kind of punched our ticket there and decided to go with the really neutral um, organic sort of tree wallpaper with the metallic um, pears. And the colorful runner. This is an and this is a very old grandfather clock of the husband's, and nobody in the house wanted it. Nobody in his family wanted it, and it was gonna go. It was gonna go. They were gonna give it away. So we decided to ultimately to to lacquer it. We put it in a lacquer booth. We lacquered it citron yellow, and um and it had a second life. So super super fun space. We they had a little peekaboo door there under the steps that we painted for her daughter's little playroom and this just makes me smile this whole space it's just an old house kind of living a new life so the picture on the left is um just off the kitchen and it's just a beautiful little breakfast room very very small and again she wanted something to lighten and brighten the stone so we we opted for this wallpaper. And at the end of the day, when I looked at it, you know, we really had more ceiling than we did walls. So we just went ahead and did the whole thing. And I think it's a great use of the wallpaper. Um, it just creates a little, a little jewel box there for her, for the family. And on the right is a just a vinyl paper again in the bathroom. But to note here. Uh, she had an old mirror in her basement that belonged to somebody or other. She, she didn't know what to do with it and didn't like it. So again, we stuck it, stuck it in the lacquer booth and lacquered it up. And I think it's just, it's fun. It, it's got a second life. And then this is the family room in the house. Um, she really wanted to lacquer a ceiling. So we went with the cobalt blue, again, an over dye rug here just to saturate. It's great for the family, big oversized ottomans for, you know, bowls of popcorn and um, snacks and just tons and tons of seating for family. Overskilled wallpaper, pattern on pattern for a young family. It's just, it's a lot, but they love it. And um, it's just a great spot. And then last for this house, I think these are the last slides for this house. Um, she does have quite an extensive wardrobe. So we took a, a guest room and turned it into a closet there on the left and opted to use uh, a mirrored wallpaper on the ceiling. And it really went a long way. It reflects a ton of light for a closet. It's really a great, um, I was really thrilled with the way that turned out. We went with the dark walls and a really fun silk rug and just basically turn the entire room into her closet. And then on the right is their master bedroom. Um, we used a, a textured mica, mica paper on the master bedroom wall with a really beautiful floral, floral drapery. And then to note to the artwork, um, they are avid Grateful Dead fans and sort of travel all over the country um, touring with them. And so we framed a bunch of their old posters and hung them in their bedroom. And it's just a really fun way to kind of personalize their space. So Moss Trail is a really beautiful mid-century property. It's a um, the clients, she's a real estate agent and had been looking for a long time for her dream home and found this house. And in some ways, like, so I love mid-century. So this was super fun for me to walk into this house and think that we could, you know, she and I shared a vision for what we wanted to do here. So this was a, a really fun project for me. Um, the, the staircase on the left, um, 
it was funny. They, as much as she loved the house, she wanted to rip it out. And I was like, absolutely not. I love that staircase. So there was, there was a lot going on with it. Um, but what we did is we stripped, we stripped out the, the, the carpet and we did a really unique installation of the, of the carpet there. We individually wrapped each step and it just turned out so, so well. And the large scale artwork there and the runner in the entry, it just, I just, I love the way that that turned out. And over on the right, you can sort of see the staircase peeking out. That's part of the dining room, but just kind of an example of how you can create a makeshift bar out of just about anything. That was actually a, a nightstand at one point, and we took it and kind of put some wine bottles on it and some objects, and there it is. It's a bar. And this is the the living room of this house. And it had such a great, it has got such great ceiling height. So we commissioned a local artist to do, I mean, I don't remember how big that, that painting is, but it's, it's huge. And it just really makes that space. And because, and I don't know whether you can tell from the picture, but because this, the, the ceiling is vaulted here, we decided to use the punchy wallpaper on the lower wall and where the drapery was. And it just showcases that it just showcases that gorgeous sofa. And we used an indoor outdoor carpet here. They have two young kids, little babies. Um, and it's just super functional, you know, really family friendly, but also modern and fun and light and bright. And then this is part of the family room, this bar. And eventually this is on a phase to be redone. And they didn't, they didn't want to leave it the way it was, but we didn't, you know, we didn't, we weren't ready to go crazy and renovate the whole thing. So um, do we have a before picture for this guy? Oh my gosh, there it is. So this is what it looked like when we arrived. And um, you can see it was just sort of, they were using it as a bar, but it was all, it's very, very different. So we decided to go ahead and just um, strip all that away and paint it and um, keep it that way for a couple of years. So I think it turned out beautifully. And then the last picture for this house is their nursery. She was expecting as we were doing the house and a, a, a baby girl and um, they just didn't have a budget for this space and had used their own furniture. And that was totally cool, but she really wanted to put a special stamp on it. So we went ahead and picked out a mural and kind of put our dollars there. And I just think it's so cool the way it turned out. We, we put a mural on two of the four walls and it just transformed the space. So again, wallpaper, I love wallpaper. Phillips Cabin is an Ohio cabin. It's a cabin in Ohio, and it's actually the same family as the very first um, house that we talked about, Arlington, the family of eight. So this is a, a beautiful, beautiful, it's a three bedroom, it's a small space, a small house that they bought as a retreat that they could drive to from Columbus. And this was such, this is just, they're just the, the nicest family. And it was so much fun. They had purchased this house and it was in very good condition. We didn't have to do a ton of construction. So it was a lot of design. So on the left, um, you can see that, that it's one big open space. So one of the biggest challenges was just sort of delineating the spaces. So in that one room, we have, you know, dining, entry, family room, sitting room, dining room. Um, but I just, I think, I think the rugs, the way that we use the rugs, we used a pattern rug for the main one and then two additional rugs on either side. I think it really helped to separate the spaces. And the picture on the right shows the dark wallpaper, which I think they were hesitant at first thinking it would make the, this make it dark, but I think it really adds something to that big fireplace wall. And, um, I just love the way that turned out. And then the kitchen, which is directly behind there, um, they had an old pr printing press as the, as the Island. And it's just, it was so cool. And I wanted to, but I wanted to warm it up. It was, there was a, there was, it was 
it was kind of a cold space. So we did use a textured orange vinyl paper on the majority of the kitchen walls. And then in that little nook, that little breakfast nook where the coffee maker and everything is, we selected those really fun oranges. And it's just, it's just such a fun surprise that those doors close over top, but it's a, it's fun to peek in there and see that. This is the guest room. Um, they did have an existing bed that they wanted to use. And so we decided just to paint it. We painted it, you know, a red orange and um, the windows, um, again, it's a small space. So we had to stack the drapery and do one way draws on the two sides, but um, that's a great tip. You know, if you don't have enough room for drapery, but you really want that softness in a bedroom, you can just do a one way draw on those window treatments and it functions, it functions just as well. And this is the screened in porch, which I love. We used outdoor furniture here, but treated the space as an indoor room, um, you know, just like you would any other room, even though it's outside and um, got the couch and the chairs and the fun artwork. And um, it's just, it's, it leads to the outside. It's such a great, such a great space outdoor rug. Okay, so Rabbit Hill is, these folks had the best artwork I've ever seen. They brought me into this house and um, they had a laundry list of things that they wanted to do, but they had collected the most incredible artwork. And so the first thing we did was take all the artwork off the walls and you can see the before picture there um, and, you know, stacked it all to the side to figure out what we were going to, how we were going to um, sort of reinvent all this great artwork in this house that had become somewhat dated. The floor, the black and white floor, they were really wanting to get rid of it. I think they were tired of it and felt like it was dated. And so that was something that I really pushed to keep. I felt uh, it was classic and it's really hard to reproduce that today. So they trusted me and I was so relieved. We got to keep the floor and uh, we modernized the space with this fabulous wallpaper and a new runner and a really modern chandelier. And I just think the space is so much fun. We updated the lighting um, and did a, did a lot of painting of the trim. And it's just, it was just phenomenal, um, the result. And here you can see some of their really incredible artwork on the left um, in their family room. We, we played around with it and figured out sort of how it would best be. That again is a wallpaper, a textured paper on those walls. It's not paint. And um, we have a big sectional in there, cozy rug, uh, game table, and two lights. The lights in those rooms, that, that's actually the same room. It's opposite sides and the ceiling heights were different. So we used the same light and just adjusted the drops so that they would hang at the same height. So it kind of fools the eye. Um, and this is the kitchen, which is kind of where the whole project started. We were redoing the kitchen and then it kind of bled into all these other spaces, but, um, the kitchen was quite dated and it needed, we needed to ex expand the footprint. So this turned out beautifully, um, to note the lighting in here is oversized over the Island. And I, I just think it's so great. The we had ceiling height here. So I really wanted to um, capitalize on that and give us something really special over the island. And again, we used a fun print on the bar stools, which I think is almost always a great idea because you don't have a lot of opportunity to have fun in a kitchen. And this was one way to do that along with that, with that blue backsplash. On the left, that is the husband's study. And um, he's a collector and has so many beautiful things and such a great backdrop for all that artwork. And we added that really fun, modern light. And again, there's the ottoman. So that ottoman existed for them. And I think it was covered in like a bright red leather or something. So we picked a 
a fun chevron embroidery print and and gave that a new life and on the right is their dining room this was really a fun space we painted out all of the trim in the room we lacquered it a dark sort of glossy gray and we had fun beaded wallpaper and this oversized lacquered chandelier um again with their with their artwork and a more traditional table it just all sort of sort of came together there and then Rose Lane, which is our last project um, that we're going to talk about tonight. This is a historical home. Um, two physicians live there and they really wanted to maintain the historical character of the house. Um, and they were very, very specific about what they wanted, but again, needed, we needed to update, update the house. It was dated. So this kitchen was completely transformed. Um, they blew it open and added all these beautiful windows. And I think that it turned out beautifully. We kind of, we added all these, all these hanging fixtures in front of the windows, which I think kind of modernizes it a little bit and certainly adds a lot of utility. We had high ceilings, which is great. And um, infused color again in the stools, the runner and the island. Um, and again, you can see here, we did bring the backsplash all the way up over the windows. And I think that's really effective and not cutting your spaces off. And then just open to the space, you can see there's a bar um, to the left and it, you know, they selected this really fabulous tile, ran it vertically and suspended those shelves and um and those fun sconces it just it's it's just so functional there's tons of storage in that bar and we used a different countertop there too it's a little bit glam you know she she likes a little bit of glitz so that was a fun a fun place to do that and again you can kind of get a better picture of the runner that we used um that's a vintage runner in the kitchen and it it just fits perfectly and I think adds a lot. And then this is the, the living room. And we started with the rug in this room. She really loved that, that color and that pattern. And um, I really wanted to, the, the window treatments were gonna stay simple. We have a trim there on the Roman shade off to the left. So the wallpaper behind the bookcases is, is, is got hummingbirds and it just added all of those fun colors to the space. It gave us a jumping off point. Um, and we also recovered their very old fireplace um, fender in a, a new leather and used a um a mirror an antique mirror subway tile on the fireplace there was an old cracked marble kind of a dark marble there before and that also reflected the light and really modernized the space so um that's the living room and that's all of it so um those are a few of my favorite sources and um I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has any or any. We had a few people write in during the program. And let me just say, read a few of them to you. Do you have favorite colors? Oh, do your favorite colors ever change? Oh my gosh, all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I, I that's the problem. I, I like all colors. I do love them all. And so I think my favorite color combinations change more than the colors themselves, because I, I don't really have a lot of colors I don't like. Um, I think it's just, you know, as you explore and as you design more, you come up with unique color combinations and that's what I fall in love with, you know, every time. Um, someone asked, um, let's see, are there some resources you would recommend that have great color items, but more for someone on a budget? Any favorite stores? 
Yeah. I mean, I have to say, I love anthropology. I think it's great. I mean, you know, there are a lot of, they have the the home section and I think, you know, it's not always less expensive, but I think they do have some really great budget friendly stuff and really unique things that you can't necessarily find anywhere else. I think they really have a very curated collection. And I, I mean, depending on whether you like modern or or traditional. I also really love, you know, Crate and Barrel and CB2. I mean, those are for, especially for accents, I think that's a great, a great resource. Um, someone asked, what is the difference between lacquer and paint? Well, there's a big difference because paint, there's various types of paints. So you can buy, you know, paint for the wall, just basic paint. And then you can buy, you know, like, oil-based paint, which they don't really do as much anymore. But, but today you can buy paint for your walls, regular paint. And then there's furniture paint. Like Benjamin Moore has a line of, of it's not lacquer, but it's, it's, it's made for furniture. And I, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's made like, if you want to paint frames or if you want to paint furniture, but true lacquer, um, Benjamin Moore and other some of the other companies they don't actually make that it's a very special product you have to purchase um and you would need to that's to put into like a lacquer gun or a lacquer booth so the gentleman that I use to do my lacquering has an actual lacquer booth and he will not use anything other than true lacquer paint huh. someone it asked really helpful if I could tell you what it was called but I I'm, <laughs> unfortunately I can't, I can't think of it <laughs> Uh, someone asked, when you're on a shoestring budget, what tips do you have that make an, a strong impact? I mean, I think you, I think you, you get a bang for your buck, you know, you pick, you know, maybe you can't afford to, you know, maybe you do peel and stick wallpaper. I mean, this is a big thing now, you know, you, you buy it, it's inexpensive and you put it up yourself, you know, I mean, I think there's a way you could, you could do peel and stick wallpaper on your ceiling you know, that would make a huge impact. You can take an old, an old accessory and lacquer it, you know, a fun color, or you can go to Ikea and find a really bright colored runner and then select a color from that and paint something, you know, none of that really is going to, is going to break your budget. It's just more about thinking big, um, and thinking about doing something really different and fun. Great tips. I mean, my, I have some, I have my, I mean, one of my designers, she, she took a bunch of different paint colors and painted all the risers in her house, all different colors. I mean, that didn't cost anything. And it's just amazing what she did. I mean, it's really creative and very unique and different. So, I mean, you know, you just have to sort of think outside the box. Fun ideas. Take um, it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. Do you change colors for each season? say a different color palette in pillow throws for summer, another for winter, et cetera. Do you recommend changing things up seasonally? I don't, I have to tell you, I don't, I don't. And I don't understand that. I, you know, I tried to do that once I have a kitchen rug and I love it so much. And I talked myself into getting a second, very similar one that I'd swap out in the fall or something. That was like three years ago. It's like in my basement. I mean, I just sort of feel like, um, you should, you should embrace what you love, do what you love. And when you're tired of it, change it. You know, I just, you know, not to say that's wrong to do seasonal, but I personally don't do that. Someone asked, what is an over dyed rug? So that's where they take a rug and they strip it. I don't know the process exactly, but they, they, they strip it down and they kind of destroy it so that it doesn't have, it's almost threadbare. Like it, it's, um, it's broken down. It's, it's, um, what's the word it's, um, distressed. And then they dye it into like a really high pigment dye. So like a crazy, like, like what you saw, like they're not all bright, but generally speaking, an over dye rug is going to have a more vibrant color to it because it's been double dipped. It's been distressed and then dipped. So it's like stripped down and then it absorbs all the color. Uh, another rug question, uh, resources for reasonable rugs. Oh boy. <laughs> um, that's really tough. Cause you know, I, 
I mean, again, it's that same, it's the same, it's the usual suspects. I would probably be looking at, you know, those regular spots, you know, Crate and Barrel, you know, they're, they're Serena and Lily, um, those kinds of places. I mean, they, they definitely have some fun designs. They've got great designers on staff and they're coming up with new things. And, um, those bigger box stores are going to have that. I mean, I do really sometimes like the stuff at Ikea. I think it's fun um, if you have an Ikea new, near you. Um, but I don't have any other great suggestions for that. Someone just typed in floor carpet tiles, question mark. I don't know anything about that. <laughs> I'm so <All> right. sorry. <laughs> Somebody also asked, they saw a swan fabric in one of your slides and was wondering whose it was. I think it's Schumacher. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's Schumacher. Depend. I mean, I'm, it's got to be. Yes, she's nodding. Yes, I think it is Schumacher. Um, there's a, another question. When using color, do you have to address each room together or separately? Well, in a home in general, you want to have a flow. So I consider each house, like as you see at the beginning of each chapter, there are color palettes. And, you know, you're not going to see like really heavy jewel tones mixed in with pastels mixed in with medium brights. I mean, for me, it's a flow. There's a flow to the house. So while you don't have to use the same colors everywhere, you definitely want it to, it's a feeling. You want it to feel like you could drag a chair from one room into the other one and it's not going to clash. So for me, you know, the trick is finding that balance. Um, and a lot of times I'll be working on a room and a client will, you know, I have a very collaborative office and studio. So I, I encourage clients to look and pull things out themselves, but sometimes they'll bring something like over, like a really heavy, like mohair or velvet in like a really dark burgundy. And it's like, we're working with medium brights and pastels. And it's like, that looks like winter and we're working in a summer or a spring palette. So I try to think of it like that. Like, think about if you're getting dressed and you're wearing, you know, a pair of linen pants and a silk blouse. And then you bring out like a mohair throw. It's like, no, that's not what we're doing today. That's just not going to go. So for me, it's more about that with the color. And it's also about the texture and the feel of the fabric. You know, are you talking about velvets or are you into linens or is this a chintz, you know? So it's not a simple answer, but but you do need to, to keep that in mind. And I often think of it as like when you're getting dressed, you know, when you go to get dressed, you're not going to wear a big heavy wool sweater with a pair of linen pants. It just doesn't. Doesn't work. Doesn't go. Yeah. Um, someone asked, what mistakes do you see over and over again in do it yourself decorators? So that's easy. So it's <laughs> underskilled lighting. Okay. It's like, lighting that's too small lamps really lamps with like black and red shades like really dark sort of small lamps I see a lot of underscaled a lot of underscaled rugs um and I see a lot of furniture oversized furniture so when designing a space it's super important to take into consideration the traffic flow of each room um, and making sure that it's going to function and not just look a certain way. And then, you know, the, the biggest thing I see is like the dining room rug that's like eight by 10, but the table itself is like 10. So then it's like the chairs are hanging off or, so it's just important to look at the scale. And there, there are rules. I mean, there are rules about that. You know, you want the rug to be, you know, 25 to 30 inches larger than where the chair sits so that when you pull it out, it's not off the rug. You know, there are certain things that you can pay attention to when designing yourself. Good tips. Um, last question, because we're running a little bit over is, um, would you share some of your tips on narrow, narrow rooms? Yeah, I mean, a narrow room. So you want to narrow rooms are typically like, I think, again, you get into you want to get the the rug is super important. Um, you want to get a rug that's almost room sized if you can, so that it's going to not appear like a runway, you know, you want to just you want to diminish transitions floor transitions in a really narrow room. And you also want to make sure you orient your furniture 
so that you're not trying to cram it all, you know, you want to work, you want to make it work for you, not against you. So in a narrow room, I would definitely try to put things opposite each other versus trying to line things up on the narrow side. So I don't know what type of room this is, but, um, you know, it's really important to make sure that you are not, you know, handicapping yourself further by using the wrong rug or the wrong furniture. And you can definitely, um, hang a mirror. You can do different things to reflect light, make the space look larger. I mean, if it's a really narrow kitchen, you can use a mirrored backsplash and it'll make it look twice as big. There's all sorts of, of things you can do. If you have like a galley kitchen, you know, that's a fun place to use a mirror as a backsplash, things like that. Great tips. Um, I am sorry, but, oh, there I went. I'm sorry, but we are running over. So I have to close the evening, but let me show everyone the book again. As I said, Barrett Bookstore have them on the shelf and they're really, it's a really beautiful book and the presentation was superb. So thank you both Molly and Betsy for spending your evening with us tonight. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, and good luck with all your book signings. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks everyone. Care. Good night. Good night.